Shakti. Such a pleasure to have all of you here with us. I'm seeing uh, all of you after a very, very long time. Yes, ma'am. We have missed you. Yes. <laughs> I have missed you all too. I mean, you all keep seeing uh, yes. them. I'm seeing <laughs> after a really long time in a live session. But we do also have a lot of uh, recorded sessions yes. which are up. So uh, I guess they keep, you know, the interaction on like that. Hi, good evening. What's up? Uh, hi, Shivan. Actually, my and my midterms are going. An SST exam is on Saturday. Uh, voice buffering. Is the voice not okay? Voice is not clear. Uh, can we just check? Uh, can you hear me now? Ankita ma'am has got to check. <laughs> she ah, there's, a buffering, there's, there's a buffering of the voice. There's a little bit of noise in the background. All right, we are back. I can see a lot of hearts uh, on the screen, likes and hearts and lots of people uh, sending a lot of likes and hearts here. Please continue. Continue to shower your love. We love it. Now first tell us, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, fine. Hi Neha, ma'am. I'm excited for the menti. So am I. Yes, long time after long time I'm seeing all of you all. I can see a lot of hearts over here. Where is Ankita ma'am? Ankita ma'am, they're missing you. Please come back. She, she was basically, she's just gone to check the, the sound. Uh, long time to go, Tarana ma'am. I'm your huge fan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, but can you hear us or no? That's the, that's the most important thing. Can you send yes. us some thumbs up to see whether we are audible and visible, please? Come on. Biology ma'am is right here. The beauty about Ankita ma'am is she's multi-talented, like a superstar. Huh? So she does biology for your grades. She does even for the higher grades. She teaches a lot. She teaches SST. She's really like a rock star. Okay, oh, thumbs up, which awesome. means we can be heard. So quickly, all of you, for those of you who have not joined Menti yet, please go to www.menti.com and use the code 12409598. And we're going to be starting very quickly. Now you know how Menti works. There are These are basically uh, multiple choice questions. Yes. And of course, we would be giving you the correct answer. Uh, you have to, uh, a lot of these chapters have already done, been done for you uh, on the channel before, as yes, I understand, right? Yes, Most of them have already been done. And uh, so obviously, this is like preparation. So we're going to zip through really, really quickly. Uh, use all your knowledge from the previous lessons to <laughs> focus on this and become a part of the leaderboard. Yes. The faster you do it, the more correct answers you give. You have a chance to be on the leaderboard. So shall we uh, begin? Angita ma'am is even teachers for need students yes yeah, see yeah. i told you she's a rock star ma'am this is ishan here i got first position yesterday menti are wow, no, very, very nice good, very good okay so the way that we're going to do this is you're going to see we are here together to show you that this we're together here yeah. <laughs> okay. and physically uh, we're there together yes physically in the same place uh, and uh, Angita ma'am is going to be dealing with uh, some subjects and I'm going to be dealing with some subjects but essentially while she's dealing I'm not going anywhere I'm sitting right there in the studio watching all your comments and watching Ankita ma'am uh, as usual like I said she's a rock star I love watching her so with Thank that you, I'm going to see y'all all really soon I'll be back in a bit right Yes, everyone. So let's get started. So I, I can see that all of you are here. You know the drill, right? You have to go on www.menti.com. The code is 12409593. Sorry, 98. Um, I hope that all of you are ready. Class 9th, especially right, the history part. See, we have we have loved those two chapters. Like from the bottom of our heart. It's a dil nichod nichod ke padhai ki and we, have, we feel so happy about learning, uh, learning about the French Revolution and of course the socialism. So I hope that all of you are ready and Paul science is very easy and geography is a very easy subject and economics is the, e the easiest one. So everyone, I hope that all of you are ready. Quick thumbs up and we'll be starting. See, I really want to see all of you quickly joining the mentee and everyone, please make sure you hit the like button for the video. Class mein aa gaye ho, thoda sa wait kare ho. Hit the like button everyone so that we know that you are there with us. Tarana ma'am, yehi pe hai. Ma'am will be coming back when we have the questions, right? When we have the geography and the economics question, ma'am will be coming and will be quizzing you. So everyone, please make sure you stay with us till the end. It's not a very lengthy session. We make sure that we not take much of your time. We understand that your examinations are going on. So, jaldi se khatam karenge. History mein kuch nahi pada hai. Chalta hai. As you all say, ham tukka maar hai. So do try it at least. You will be able to recall some of the important concepts and ham hai. Chali. 
Let's start everyone. Let me just fix this up. यहाँ पे थोड़ा सा अपना setting करते हैं. We have the things so that we can move around. Okay everyone. Here we go. This is the schedule that we have for our SST. So देख लीजिए SST and science का schedule है. I am hundred percent sure you all have seen it earlier also. But just in case if you have missed it, please make sure you see it. Chali, are we ready everyone? History all the best. Can't hear me. You have to go back. I think you are on the previous page. Uh, starting the session start start होता probably you are there. Just refresh it. Come back. This is a live movement. Okay, fan का sound आ रहा है बच्चों. क्या करें? थोड़ा सा sound आएगा fan का. It's a closed room, right? And uh, yeah, अगर fan नहीं हुआ तो इसे पसीना पानी पानी हो जाएगा. <laughs> Somewhat nervous, it's okay. A little bit nervousness is always good. That will be helping us to keep you alert. Okay, everyone, let's get started. Here are everyone to the first question. I hope that all of you are ready. Giving you some time, quickly write your name over here. Everyone, tell us a little. Yes, yes. Tell the time. I'll find. I will test my eyes over here. I can see a caterpillar. I can see a pin. Right. I can see a flower. I can see a unicorn. I can see a puffer fish also. We have a puffer fish. Yes, oh, we have a lollipop over here. We have a dinosaurs. Oh, we have a plane also. Unicorn is well hidden. There are two hearts. There's a hat also. Kaju, do we have a kaju? It's it's a new avatar. I I was not aware about that. Okay, everyone, I can see. Okay, we'll start. One fifty students. One forty five. One forty six. One forty seven. One. Okay, it's going up and down. Charlie, everyone, let's get started. I can see. All of you here, and all the best, everyone. And uh, let's get started. Here to the first question of history. Ta-da! Drum rolls, everyone. Here we have the first session, and the reason. The session is women struggled for the equal political rights continued for more than 200 years after the French Revolution. The reason is finally in the 1946, the women in France won the right to vote. Now we have to find out whether both the statements are correct or incorrect. Whether are the correct reason for A or not. Read the question carefully, everyone. Yes, very good. I can see some correct answer in the chat. Yes, in the chat, some correct answer, everyone. Do you think it's a correct explain explanation? Ha! Huh? Now I want to spend some time over here. The question was, what was, what was the question, everyone? Kis kis ne question achhe se nahi pada? Raise your hand. I'll go back and read the question. थोड़ा सा zoom in करके देखना पड़ेगा, right? Yes, what was the question, everyone? Women struggled for their political rights. First statement was definitely correct, right? The the reason is, see what what was the question? The the question was कि they struggled for it, and the reason was कि हाँ उनको political rights मिल गई. But do you think there's a, a relation between any of these? जल्दी से बताओ वी ऑलवेज आस्क वाई वी ऑलवेज आस्क वाई डू यू थिंक दैट हैज रिलेशन विद इट नहीं शुभारंभ करा है हमने गलत आंसर के साथ इट्स ओके एवरी वन इट्स ओके सी वी हैव टू वेन एवर वी हैव एसेशन एंड रीजन एवरी वन इट्स ऑलवेज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू आस्क द क्वेश्चन वाई वी हैव द स्टेटमेंट राइट एसेशन आस्क वाई क्लियर चलिए गुड दैट वी आर क्लियर विद दिस लेट्स मूव हेयर एवरी वन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू Yes. Okay. Question number two, everyone, on your screen. Let's quickly move ahead to question number two. The political body representing the three estates of the pre-revolutionary France was known as what? Yes. Estate General National Assembly Convention of the Constitution. See, option number D. Go to Mati vote. Karna. Those of you who are voting for option number D, I have a special place for you. But you know that option number D is incorrect. See those of you who are very regular to my class know that we have legends, we have pro legends, we have ultra pro legends, we have super super ultra pro le legends. So let's see who all are there with us. Very good. Wow. Thank God. Thank God. There is no one who have voted for constitution, right? Kab tak tahi nahi constitution. Very good, everyone. The majority of you have voted for the correct answer. That is the estate general, right? We all remember that we have the three. थ्री एस्टेट थे दिस इज हैव द स्टेट जर्नल जहां पे थर्ड एस्टेट की बात को सुनता नहीं था ओनली फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड एस्टेट वर हर्ड राइट वेरी गुड लीडर बोर्ड विल बी हैविंग हिमेश आफ्टर एवरी सब्जेक्ट सो प्लीज बार-बार आप मत पूछना आफ्टर हिस्ट्री आफ्टर ज्योग्राफी आफ्टर पॉल साइंस आफ्टर इकोनॉमिक्स क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 एवरीवन ऑन योर स्क्रीन 
आई नो अवनी अल्ट्रा प्रो मैक्स लेजेंड मैच द फॉलोइंग थी दिस इज अ रिपीटेड क्वेश्चन we have seen this question n number of time and we know the importance of this question because these are the important taxes the third estate used to give it to the clergy and to the nobility so everyone i hope that all of you remember unit of currency kya tha france ka this is a very easy question what is tees and tali you remember this daant aur tali very good very good everyone please make sure you are picking up the correct answer yes we have few more seconds everyone everyone please make sure you hit the like button for the video and please do not go by the chat yes okay it's taking some time very good everyone 100 of you have voted for the correct answer very very good so let's see what we have right see the unit of currency what is the unit of currency everyone this right this we have the unit of currency what was the b option ha uh, ab now the reality will come how many of you have seen the chat and have wrote the answer or picked up the answer yes bachche menti mein uh, neha on the presentation right on your phone you will be able to see the options clearly yes very good very good chaliye so i hope that it's clear right Okay, Charlie. Moving to the next question, everyone. Moving to the next question. Question number four on your screen. Here we go. Here we go, everyone. Question number four. I know, Santosh. It, it is confusing. I agree. Who wrote the two treaties of the government? Again, a very straightforward question. We have discussed about that. We have these three very important. or uh, writers i would say very three in important philosopher who have contributed to the development to the liberal ideas right and of course we still read about them yeah answer in the finger tips very good everyone i hope cross keeping my fingers crossed only three names are there which is valid option number c was definitely out of the context it's not there in a textbook right but of course it's there in the other sets 96 of you have picked up the correct answer john locke is the one who wrote the two treaties of the government now jaldi se batao right what did these two people right jean rosieu and the montesquieu right what they wrote jaldi se yes come on come on come on everyone see it's a recall class right i'm sure you all remember it social contract absolutely correct absolutely correct Yes, spirit of laws. Okay, good. Question number five, everyone. I hope that all of you are enjoying, and I hope that it's giving you a chance to quickly recall the concepts and the topics that we did. Okay, very good, Papaya. Question number five, everyone. When was the slavery abolished in the French colonies? It's a straightforward question. I hope that all of you remember the year. We have discussed about the triangle. The the triangle of the slavery right we have discussed about the three countries which contributed to it and how the triangle used to move very good very good see i'm not reading the options because of course all the options are very confusing if i have to give you a hint yeah we will be able to find the hint also answers learned by heart very good shrivali i can see two 1748 and 1848 everyone the correct answer is 1848 see why just remember one thing everyone 1848 now we are going into the french revolution time right that is the timeline we have it over there 1740 is way back so definitely it was not abolished so the slavery in the france was abolished in the year 1848 and not 1748 one twenty of you have voted for the correct answer 1700 i think see never go for the 17 wala years especially in the question of french revolution Back when Kacha King ruled, kar rahe the ya, yeah, it will be in the seventeens. But over here, it will not be the case. Everyone, are we clear with this? Quick thumbs up. Right? Okay. Chaliye. Question number six, everyone. Now we'll have a rapid fire. Yes. Question number six on your screen, and let's see, everyone. Let's see what we have. By the mid nineteenth century, which idea attracted the wild, sorry, widespread attract attention towards the 
reconstruct restructuring the european society again i'm not reading the options because there's only one option which is correct it will be like ma'am aise hi hota hai mentee <laughs> yes everyone see what we have see there's one option which is definitely out of our context very good 156 of you have voted for the correct answer the idea which actually spread during the mid mid 19th century is idea of the socialism now of course we have uh, two people have voted for the capitalism okay three people have voted for the marxism and 10 of you 10 of you have voted for the communism now again if you look at these right the ideas are kind of very similar to the socialism at that particular point like in different different context altogether but this idea of the socialism right where the property is to be shared with the equally like for example if you have four people for four people are working on the same property no one has the ownership of that and the property will be distributed equally it is all about the society right so that's a correct answer but a very proud majority of you got the correct answer everyone chaliye question number 7 on your screen okay when was the socialist revolutionary party was formed in russia 1970 okay. 1990 1970 1900 1945 okay when was the socialist revolutionary party formed in russia again it's a direct question i remember telling you that this is a very very important question everyone very important year with the year everyone yes i will be sharing the you know uh I will be sharing that PPT with you where we have the all important years and the important events from this particular chapter. Very good. Any three of you have voted for the correct answer. That is the nineteen hundred, right? Ninety one nine double zero. See again. If we go back in time, we can't go back in time. But if we go back and flip on the pages of our textbook, we will remember that. See, nineteen forty five cannot be the case, right? It's very close, very recently. 1900 1917 1919 is a time after the second world war like before it just before it right so 1900 is a time when of course these parties have started formed why because they were planning to have the pressure to put the pressure on the king right at that particular time so please do remember that it was a time of the 19 right not not ahead not before that yes okay Yes, Faiz. I have seen your messages. Now I think you will be fine. Okay. Question number eight, everyone, on your screen. But you will get the notes for animal tissues also. Leaderboard after history questions. Who started the collectivism, co collectivization program in Russia? You remember this word, collective. See, you just re remember the word, collective. We have Karl Marx. We have Lenin. We have Engels. Right, Frederick. And we have Joseph Stalin. So in this particular chapter of the socialism, if I have to give you a link, if I have to leak out the answer, this was the last part of the chapter. Yes, this was the last part of the chapter. That's a hint I can give you. Yes, very good, everyone. The correct answer is Joseph Stalin. Now, who was he? After the de death of the Lenin, right? He took the control of the party, right? And he said that at that particular time, the Russia was going a very hard period where the people struggled for the food, right, the crops. So what happened at that particular time? We saw that Joseph Stalin, what he did, he said that we will be collecting the grains. We will be collecting the grains that are the farmers are growing. Yes, clear, everyone. Yes. So that particular program is the name over here. Clear, everyone. Are we clear, all of you? Quick thumbs up. I hope that all of you are enjoying everyone. Yes. Option number E. Can't say. Okay. <laughs> Very good. It's okay, but see now we have the session. Okay, everyone. So ninety-seven of you have voted for the correct answer. Let's move to the question number nine. Everyone, see we should have the high energy in the class, right? It's an easy peasy question. Okay, a session in the reason, everyone. Please don't look at the center wala part. Just look at the top part. 
नेम ऑफ द रशियन कैपिटल द नेम ऑफ द रशिया कैपिटल वॉज सेंट पीटरबर्ग वॉज चेंज टू पेट्रोगार्ड द रीजन बिहाइंड दैट इज देर वॉज अ एंटी जर्मन सेंटिमेंट ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड वॉर फर्स्ट प्लीज डू नॉट रीड द सेंटर पार्ट दैट्स द रिपिटेशन ऑफ इट येस okay very good everyone very good yes some glitch over here everyone avenger jaldi jaldi everyone the we know that the capital city of russia at that particular time was we used to know, name it as a saint petersburg it was changed to the petrograd right of course it was changed why it was changed it's very easy see the now the reason is making completely sense why it was changed because there was a anti german sentiment during the course of the first world war so what will be the correct answer as majority of you have voted both the statements are correct and the r is the right explanation for it i know that okay i'm really sorry for that those of you have read the center part i was telling you not to read that yes What are you now? We clear with the question. Are we clear with the question, everyone? Very good, Sai. Very good. It's okay if you have just joined. No, no, not an issue. Avenger Butter. My name is Ankita. You got it right. Very good. Chali. Last question of our history, everyone. See, you have, you have so many subjects ahead, right? You have Paul Science, you have Geography, you have Economics. Your energy should be really very high, everyone. Question number ten on your screen. Ta-da. Okay. Match the following, everyone. We have list one and list two. We have A, B, C, D. We have one, two, three, four. Bloody Sunday, which year? In in which year it happened? We have February Revolt, Civil War in Russia, and Lenin returns to Russia. You just have to pick the one correct answer. and based upon that you will be able to find the correct answer jaldi say everyone yes which of these option is correct so you can see a1 a1 a3 and a2 pick the correct option and you will be able to find the correct answer okay i can see a long chain of the correct answer i would say some misleading answers everyone so do not believe in the chat okay it's a long time everyone all of you quickly vote i'm sure all of you have voted for this few more minutes everyone a3 very good everyone so 122 of you have voted for the correct answer a is 3 b is 1 c is 2 and d is 3 or d is 4 just please make sure you mark this up we'll be moving to the next slide where we'll be able to mark remember everyone a is 3 b is 1 yeah we can come back again let's see what was a everyone a was 3 so if you can mark this one right see everyone this is very important especially in maths a column now that in your examination you will have such questions where you have to match the things right so if you know the one correct answer for example if we know this this is the one right and if you know in the options if you can see okay so a ka 3 is over 1 so you can eliminate out the other option and it will be helping you in finding the correct answer okay yes it's the easiest one so whenever you are looking for any of the match the column right pick the easiest one first which you are 100% sure of and then go for the other very good so b ka we know that it's 1 right then c ka we know it's 2 and what are we left with here okay chaliye moving ahead everyone to the next question there's no next question we have the leader board everyone here everyone let's take a look at the first le leader board first leader board everyone so we have prisha prisha kaushik of 9th class we have isha we have tanish we have josna dharika we 10th grader here bachche kal hai mainti for this sst so please make sure you're there also but it's okay you're here then we have namaste ma'am is it is it do you rap nice we have hema which is the fastest one and then we have shivani very good everyone so everyone now quickly write in the comment section and tell me ke you no know, how many marks you have scored score not the marks basically how many of you got 10 out of 
That is a question that I am really interested in. How many of you got 10 out of 10? Very good, very good. We'll just wait. We'll just take 5 seconds break. Right? Do write your marks everyone. 8 out of 10, 9, 9 out of 10. 0, why 0? Aise hi. Sir, fun ke liye likhe 0. 7, 6, very good. You missed the first question. It's okay, Prabha. Chalye. We are done with this everyone, right? Now we're moving to, I think I would say, I cannot pick my subjects. I can't, I can't say, ke, you know, history is my favorite. I can't say Paul Science is my favorite and I can't say Bio is my favorite. But, yeah, I have a lot of love for this particular subject I, that I can say. That is a Paul Science everyone. So, without taking much of your time, we are starting with the question number 11. All of you, are you ready? Yes, all of you, are you ready? See, Tarana ma'am is here with us. Ma'am is here. Ma'am is just checking your answers. Kya kar rahe? I hope that all of you are prepared for geography and economics. Yes. Awesome. Very good. Very good, everyone. Ready. So now we have very two interesting chapter in Paul Science, right? We, we discussed about the democracy, right? Why democracy is super important. And of course, then we discuss about the constitutional design also. If we look at these two chapters, they are very straightforward. I would say yeah, these are the easiest chapter in the uh, in the political science. Very fast facts we have. What is democracy? We have to understand that. First chapter is a little bit trickier. But yeah, the, the uh, other chapter is easy. Okay. Question number 11, everyone, on your screen from the Paul Science. Yes. Okay. Here we have assertion and the reason the assertion is... A democratic government can do whatever it likes simply because it has won an election. Reason for that is a democratic government rules within limits set by the constitution law and the citizen rights. Do you think that both the options, both the statements are correct or not? Do you find that the reason is correct or both the statements are incorrect or one is correct, one is incorrect? That is the options we have over here. Take your movement, read the statement clearly. Always remember why, to ask a question, why. See, asking why is really very important, not just over here, but in your life also. Why? Why you have to do this? Why you have to waste your time? Ma'am, I can study, but I was doing, uh, I didn't study. Why? Because I was just on the social media. Always ask the question why. Very good, everyone. 136 of you have voted for the correct answer, and I'm very proud that all of you have picked up the correct answer. A statement was definitely incorrect because, it's, because the statement said that that after a government has won the election, they can do whatever it wants. No, they cannot do that. Second statement was absolutely correct because the government will be following a set guideline rules that are there. So, very good. Question number 12, everyone, on your screen. Here we go. Here we go. I will read the code. Pandey Gamer, the code is 14, sorry, 12409598. Match the following. Okay, legal work, legal framework order, People's National People Congress, Institutional Revolutionary Party, ZANUPF. See, there's a big hint over here. You remember this chapter? You remember this? I cannot call out the option, but that's the easiest option for us to find out. Yes, institutionally, Institutional Revolutionary Party. We have to match for the list too. We have ruling party in China. The options are up. Yes, everyone. Which is the correct option? I can see still uh, all of you are voting. There's a little bit lag over here. Yes. Okay. 96 of you have voted for the correct answer. Remember it, everyone. A2, B1, C4, D3. A ka 2, B ka 1. We'll just go back and see. A ka 2, B ka 1. A ka 2, right? Again, everyone, B ka 1. So, how we will remember this? You all remember, right? Legal framework order was issued by the Parvez Musharraf. Yes. Then, of course, we have National People Congress, which is there in China. It's a ruling party in China. Yes. Okay. Everyone, are we clear? Then, Institutional Revolutionary Party. Can you quickly tell me where will we will match it up? The Art of elim Elimination. Yes. 
Yes, everyone. Absolutely correct, right? We remember this. I R P. Yes. Very, very good, everyone. Chali. So I hope that it's clear. Awesome, awesome. Very good, everyone. So let's quickly delete this and let's move ahead to the question number thirteen. Yes, question number thirteen. I know it's P R I, right? But uh, from the top right, we were writing institutionally. Uh, you know what was C for? Constitutional party. How? Yes, it's P R I. Okay. Question number thirteen, everyone, on your screen now. Question number thirteen. Let's quickly take a look over here. Which of the following features of democracy is or are responsible for improving the quality of the decision making? Democracy is based on the consultation and discussion, right? Democratic divisions always involve many person. Discussions are taken after discussion and meetings. So decisions are taken after discussion and meeting, or all of the above. Very very easy question, everyone. Which of the following features of the democracy? Is or are responsible for improving the quality of decision making. How the decision making is being taken care of? Very good, everyone. The answer is all of the above. Why? Because in democracy, right? We know that it is based on the constitution and on the discussion. First of all, more than the constitution, sorry, the consultation. So people consult, right? There's a discussion happening with the people who are responsible for it. There's a discussion involved with the people who will be getting will be getting affected from it. Then, of course, the democratic decision. Sorry, uh, just move ahead, right? Yeah, over here. Democratic decision always involves many people. Absolutely. See, we know that in the uh, parliament house, right? We have Lok Sabha, we have Rajya Sabha. There is involvement of various individuals that are elected by us. In the in the case of Lok Sabha, not in the case of Rajya Sabha, right? And of course, decisions are taking discussions, right? We have discussions and meeting based upon those. The conclusion will be taken, and that's how the decision is made. Easy peasy, right, everyone? So all of the above is the correct answer. Chali, awesome, everyone. Question number fourteen on your screen. Paul Science tricky lag raha hai kya bachcho? Do you think that Paul Science is tricky? बताओ बताओ अरे मोनिका मैं राजधानी नहीं बनी हूं बच्चे मुझे राजधानी बना रहे हैं राइट right? बच्चे बोल रहे मैम जल्दी 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 तो इजी क्वेश्चन है इट्स इजी राइट ओके चलिए क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन एवरी वन क्वेश्चन फोर्टीन ऑन योर स्क्रीन What even does this picture represent? So I hope that you all know that CBSE have changed the pattern. Like last year, so we have these questions, right? Picture-based questions are there. We'll be getting one picture-based question, hopefully from the history and one from the Paul science. According to the sample papers that we have seen, we have the image-based question. Hence, we have these questions with us. Okay. This image represents what? Right. Killing at uh, happened at the uh, square in the 1989. Restriction by Chinese government on internet. Chinese government declaring war on none of the above. So everyone, if you look at the picture, right, we can clearly see some words written on the tires, right, at the basically at the bottom of the tanks, right. We can see some words written over here. Very good, everyone. 83 of you have voted for the correct answer. On the on the at the, the bottom right, we have the search engine names written, right? Search engine name like Yahoo. There's written on Google, Google, and other one more was there. Yes, good. That's very good. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Let's take a look at the question number fifteen, everyone. Very good. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yes, Cisco. Yes, Manji. Thank you. Question fifteen, everyone. Was it hard question? Yes, but you definitely it's there in your textbook also. So after this class, you can go and check your textbook. Yes. Okay. Democracy does not provide any methods to deal with the differences and with the conflicts. Is it true or false? Easy peasy question, everyone. See if you look at these two chapters, right? These two chapters have very basic information. we all know what is democracy is right how it works how the decisions are being made yes 
Woohoo! Well done, students. So I think we have 150 likes. Very good. Awesome, everyone. 137 of you have voted for the correct answer. Hearts, everyone. Hearts. Democracy does not provide any methods to deal with the difference of the conflicts. It does provide. It does provide. Democracy provides the methods to deal with the differences and with the conflicts, right? Awesome. Chalye. Next question, everyone. Ta -ra -ra. Next question. Next question. It's question number 16, everyone, on your screen. Janvi, the question was, Bache, we know that Democracy does plays a very important role in breaking the ice between. If there's any conflict, democracy always will always will come in between, right? Not as an in between. Basically, they will be helping in the resolving the conflicts and the differences. Okay. Here we have the next question. As I said, the reason India adopted a federal system of government after independence. India is a vast country which with diverse culture, language, and religion region. Always ask why. Always ask. Why? India adopted a federal system of the government after independence. Why? Because India is a vast country which which is diverse culture and languages and region. Very good everyone. Option number A is absolutely correct over here. Because it's answering the question why. Now, the kids ma'am, why option number B and D? Kyun hai? We know that India adopted the federal system. What we have in the federal system? What we have? In federalism, we have discussed about the distribution of the power, right? After the independence, yes, we did that. So we know that A statement is absolutely correct. The reason is that India is a vast country with a diverse culture, agriculture and, uh, sorry, culture, language and region. It adopted federal system. It adopted the federal system. Why? The distribution of the power system. Why? Because one person cannot hold the power. Because we have different culture, languages and different types of varieties in the language and in the diversity. So everyone, are we clear? Yes. What is federal system? But in, in a very simple language, right, if we say the, what is federalism or what is federal system, right, we talk about that how the power is being distributed, right? Clear? And how the power that we have with the system is, of course, it's with the people, Right, but we elect the individuals, but of course, when it goes at the government level, there's a distribution of the power. It's not that once the government is formed, they will hold all the power together. There's a distribution at a various level, horizontally also and vertically also. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, all of you. Jaldi se bataiye. Are we clear? Do give a thumbs up, everyone. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Everyone, if you talk about it, you won't be able to focus in class. So everyone, please pay attention to the class. Let's Question number 16, everyone, on your screen. Okay. Here we go. Question number 17 on your screen, everyone. Which of these positions is correct in relation to the sovereign status of India? We have discussed about it, right? We have discussed about the sovereignness, right? Ma'am, I have a doubt, ma'am, what is secularism? Secularism is a state, basically, in our... Basically, it's a very important condition, I would say. In a very simple word, that uh, there's no official religion person. Every religion is treated equally. We always say that India is a secular state. Why we call it as India is a secular state? Because India has different religions. There is no official religion and every religion has an equal respect in front of the government. Yes? Okay. 122 of you have voted for the correct answer, everyone. That's very good. So, what is the meaning of the word souvenir? Means that the nation has the power. Right? The nation does not need any intervening or any inter intervention from the other countries to make decisions. India is capable of making its own decision, be it the internal matters or the external matters. Everyone, are we clear? It's not that India will be calling some other country, Achha, na, mujhe petrol ke price badhane hai, badha do kya? See, do you think that India as a nation will be doing that? No. India has the power to take its own decisions. 
and likewise we have other countries also which have the power to take their own decisions clear fraternity bachche means the brotherhood right working together yes are we clear with it very good very good chaliye so the indian government only can decide its internal and the polit external policy so india holds the power yes kushi i'll answer your question why making of the constitution in india was a tough task i'll explain it see the con to make the constitution of a country took a lot of time and it was a little bit difficult task because we have huge diversity we have to keep in mind that everyone is treated equally in the constitution constitution are nothing but a list that we have of rules and regulation that that a citizen has to follow and that a government has to follow so it took a lot of time lot of discussion happened lot of debates happened around it and that's how the constitution have been drafted yes chaliye moving to question number 18 are koi bacche bol rahe fast chalo koi bacche bolo dheere chalo bachcho decide karo kya karna hai question number 18 on your screen everyone absolutely correct neha absolutely correct yes very good question number 18 everyone when did south africa become a democratic country now everyone this is again a very very important topic that we have in the chapter why the second chapter deals or i would say that it revolves around the importance of democracy and they're talking about the democracy of south africa that how it formed right it has a very huge history clear yes I know, I know, Rishul. I I saw your message like okay, wrong by misclick. Very good, everyone. So the South Africa became the democratic country in the year 1944. So just imagine, we got independence in 1947, right? Yes or no? After a lot of struggle, right? They have the majority and minority. They had the Europeans over there. They had the white people, and of course, they have the majority of the black people, right? and they faced lot of discrimination but after a huge struggle right they came to a common point where both white and the black came together and formed the best possible constitution that they had at that particular time and now of course people refers to it that it's very very important right the constitution was well designed people forget about so many things and they moved ahead very good very good 77 of you have voted for the correct answer and the correct answer is 26th of april 1947 ha bachche prisha wo tha system tha question number 19 everyone on your screen yes here we go chaliye the constitution begins with a short statement of its basis value what is it called easy kriti what is minority and what is majority minority when we talk about we, we talk as in terms of the less number of people for example we have major or we have majority and we have minority minority when we talk in terms of the uh, let's suppose i give an example for for example in a class if we say that we have majority of the students who loves black color raise your hand i will be there and then we have the minority probably they like you know what my favorite color is yellow so in that way very good the correct answer for this is a preamble so in our textbook also we have the front page right which is a short summary of our constitution tells about what we have in our constitution so the constitution begins with a very short statement that is a preamble okay last question everyone of the poll signs and i hope that all of you will have the majority let's see yes we the people of the india absolutely correct everyone motilal nehru and eight of the other congress leaders have drafted a constitution of india in dash of the national indian national congress in the year 1931 so year is mentioned you just have to find the place is it karachi is it lahore is it ahmedabad or none of these direct line from your ncert everyone we know this this topic is important yes i can see some correct answer few incorrect answer definitely everyone we have the polls can we have 200 likes absolutely we should have 200 likes awesome times of everyone and the correct answer is option number a yes so this particular happened in the karachi session very good everyone so with this we are done with the poll signs Ta -da! let's see the leaderboard everyone let's see the leaderboard 
Lakshya is the fastest. Then we have Tanisha, we have Josna, we have Varun and Chet Chetra, two students. We have Avni, Isha, Nivithi. We have 10 grade of here. Please write your name. We have Prisha, we have Lakshya and Namaste ma'am. Okay. So very good everyone. Right? Yeah, I'm really sorry ma'am. I took more time than I said. I said that I'll be here, I'll be like, ma'am, I'll finish in half an hour. No, no, I was really enjoying the session and I think I'm so proud of all of you. You all have done such a uh, good job. All of you all were answering so well. I was watching the comments also sitting right here, over here. Yes. Okay, so I want to know now, uh, we have finished history, we have finished political science, uh, we have... I want to clean. You want to clean? Oh! Give me one. This is one thing about Ankita, ma'am, let me tell you. That Ankita ma'am cleans no matter where she is. So she'll clean, she'll clean the vacuum system over here, then she'll clean the pen. This is what, I don't know whether to call it like a, like a, a good thing or an OCD. <laughs> it's good for me because I'm next, I get a nice sanitized pen, we dropped the pen and all of this excitement. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> basically. <laughs> See, yes, see, 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 thank you Ankita ma'am. How yes, sweet oh. of you. Oh. Okay, where is the pen? The pen yes, is in my hand. Thank okay. you. Bye you. everyone. All the best. All the best. Thank you, Ankita ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That was very interesting. So, hello. Yes, continuing, continuing. I'm not going to take too much time. Uh, very proud of you for the way that you've answered. I was watching all the comments. History is done. Political science is done. My vacuum is clean. My pen is clean. And now it is time for geography. All right. So, 10 questions in geography. Easy peasy questions because you all are like super duper rock stars. Right? Okay, so with that, let's take a look at the first question. Are you ready? I'm not going to start until I see lots of hearts and lots of um, smiley faces and lots of uh, thumbs ups and lots of nice things. No, please, no. I'm seeing you after such a long time. <laughs> Okay, come on. Please take classes for class 8 also. All right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Yay! I see a lot of hearts over here, a lot of smiles. I'm so happy. Thank you. You made my day. Okay, so with that encouragement from you all and the cleanliness from Ankita ma'am, we will start with our question number 21 out of 40, which is our first question of geography. All right then. The question number 21 appearing on your screen now. Mountain ranges in the eastern part of India forming its boundary with Myanmar are collectively called what? Is it Himachal? Is it Uttarakhand? Is it Purvanchal? Or is it none of the above? Now this is a pretty, I would say, common sense question. Take your time, answer it. You don't have too much time, but this is very easy. This is a fact-based question. I'll tell you how to remember this also. What are mountain ranges in the eastern part of India forming its boundary with Myanmar? What are they collectively called? Put in your answer. I see a lot of A, C, A, uh, Purvanchal. And the answer is yes, absolutely right. I see that 112 of you all have said Purvanchal. This is absolutely correct. Now, what we have to remember over here is that the Himalayas are divided longitudinally, which means that they are they 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 there is a north to south division. Also, there is a west to east division. Now, in terms of the west to east division, the eastern part of India, the mountain ranges in the eastern part of India are actually called Purvanchal. If you think about it, it's common sense. You know the way I remember it? Do you know the way I remember it? Purab Paschim, right? Purab means east in Hindi. So that's the way I remember it. Himachal is what is, is in the north, right? That's the mountain ranges in the north. The Purvanchal is basically the eastern hills and I remember because of the word Purab, right? Ma'am, how are you so energetic always? Yes. I have a positive attitude and I enjoy everything I do. And here especially, I love to be with all of you all. So you all give me energy. Okay, hi Priyanka, all right. Uh, first time you're attending my session, yay, good, welcome. Okay, now, fun fact means it's a high five, all right, high five. With that, are you all ready for question number two? Question number two appearing on your screen now. Question number two are for geography. Huh? So this is question number two, 22 out of 40. Uh, let's take a look at the question over here. What does the question say? Okay, answer fast to get more points. What is the question? Ah, arrange the following regional divisions of... Come on. Ma'am, I froze. Okay, 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 okay. Is it... There's a lag? There's a lag happening? Okay. Is there a lag happening? Okay. Uh, 
yeah, Ankita ma'am, just be careful of your leg. There's a big wire over there. She'll fall. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. We are solving the problem. Now it's okay? Not okay? Now okay. Is it okay? Okay, okay, it's fixed, it's fixed, it's fixed. I think it was Ankita ma'am's presence, you know. She just walked into the room and everything became beautifully okay. Alright, with that, okay now? Are we are okay? Okay, we're just checking. Okay, we are okay. So, okay, in that, uh, we now have the correct answer on the screen. The correct answer is actually 3, 1, 2, 4, right? 3, 1, 2, 4, how? What is the arrangement from west to east? Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the pictures that you see over here. So, first, we have the, we have the, uh, let me put this over here. One second. We have the Punjab Himalayas. Okay, now you see the Punjab Himalayas basically comes under, one second, I'm still trying to figure this pen thing out. One minute, one minute, one minute. How do I get out of this box over here, Ankita ma'am? Do you know? Huh? Anywhere on the screen, just click. Clicking anywhere? Not happening. Not happening. One minute. The moment I use a pink color pen, only this happens. <laughs> it's stuck. Just give us a moment, everyone. Hey, yeah. What? So you can have it. That's fine. So now basically, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Akita ma'am. This is perfect. Okay. So first you have, who wants me to take their name? Fun with Twizy. Fun with Twizy. Hi. Okay. So first you have the Punjab Himalayas. Now, how how do you demarcate what is the Punjab Himalayas? Well, the Punjab Himalayas, basically you find them between the river Indus and the river Satlij as you can see. The Indus River, the Satlij River and this is where your Punjab Himalayas come. So west, from the west, this is the first, uh, basically this is the first west division. Okay. Then you move on to the next west division which is the Kumau Himalayas. Now, how will you recognize what the Kumau, Kum, Kumau Himalayas are? Well, Kumau Himalayas are basically between the river Satlij and the river Kali. So you see Punjab was from Indus to Satlij, uh, Kumau is from Satlij to Kali. Now, logically, the next thing would be, would be what? One second, this seems to be stuck again. Hold on, hold on. And I'm going on to the next one over here. Right? The, it, it moved on. One second. Yeah. The next one is basically the Nepal Himalayas. Now, the Nepal Himalayas, as you can see, this is the third one. Third one over here, which is basically, one second, number three. How will you identify the Nepal Himalayas? The Nepal Himalayas are between the rivers Kali and Tista. So you see Indus to Satlej, Satlej to Kali, Kali to Tista and the fourth one is the Assam Himalaya which is between Tista to Dihang. So basically these uh, Himalayas, if you see they are actually divided according to the river systems. If you remember the river systems, it will become very easy for you to understand what uh, direction it is from west to east or east to west. This was west to east. Clear? All right, with that, I am going to move ahead and I am going to take a look at our next question over here. Question 23 out of 40, which is question number 3 of geography. Take a look at the question over here. Are you ready? The northern plains have been formed by the interplay of how many river systems in India? Oh, so easy. This is so easy. How many river systems in India are the northern plains been formed out of? Is it 2, 3, 4 or 1? Think about the northern plains. Think of the map of India. Try and understand what the northern plains constitute. Think about what are the river systems over there and you will get your answer. Patak. Okay, I see 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2. You are giving me all the possible answers. 8. 8 is not even an option over here. Okay. <laughs> the correct answer over here is actually 3. What are the three rivers? Well, the three rivers are actually the uh, Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. These are the three river systems, uh, rivers along with their tributaries that form the northern plains. Now, northern plains, if you think about it, the states over here, the soil over here is so very fertile, right? Why is it so fertile? Because of these three rivers and their tributaries. So this is an ideal place for the people to settle down, to practice their farming. Lots of agriculture happens over here. Can you name some uh, states that you will find in this area? Come on, come on, come on. Very easy. Northern plains, what are some of the states that you will find in this area? Quickly put it down. Next, Math uh, Mahamenti. I missed yesterday's Menti. 
यूपी पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश नॉट राजस्थान सो मच राजस्थान इज लिटिल बिट ड्राई बट ये Okay, so this is absolutely correct. Uh, well done, all of you. Now the way to remember is not think about the reverse. Think about how fertile the the ground is over here. And generally, when you relate all these things, you will get the correct answer. With that, are you ready for your next question? I definitely am. Let's take a look at question number twenty-four out of forty. Twenty-four out of forty. Uh, what is the question? Question number four. Question number four. Ah, the western coastal strip south of Goa is referred to as. Is it the Coromandel coast? Is it the Konkan coast? Is it Kannad or is it Northern Sirkar? What is the western coastal strip south of Goa referred to? Quickly put in your answers. I want to see what you think. Uh, what you all are saying? C, C, Kannad. uh kannad 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 i see a lot of people saying kannad uh up wale topper hai are hamare sab bacche topper hai all right kannad uh mistake kannad konkan konkan kannad okay so as we see over here coromandel and northern sirkar are not in the picture at all you know they are completely in a different direction they are in the east now the confusion over here could happen between the konkan coast and the kannad plains so let's take a look at what the areas are over here right so if you're talking about the western coastal plains if you see the first first picture over here mumbai to goa ah mumbai to goa means maharashtra and goa is part of what we call the uh, is basically the konkan coast right remember mumbai goa mumbai goa nice drive is through the konkan coast if you ever dr driven that route it's a beautiful route okay then just below goa you have the kannad plains which is karnataka the area of karnataka so the answer is the correct answer over here is obviously kannad plains because we were talking about south of goa remember that ah and then of course there is the kerala part of it which is the malabar coast right so these are the three coasts that you will basically find on the western side of india are you ready how many of you got the answer next okay i see some answers say people saying next let's move i am from karnataka this is so easy good i'm glad you found it easy with that let's move ahead and let's take a look at our next question question number 25 with that let's see what the question is are you ready okay question number 25 says answer the following this is an assertion reason question the chambal the sind the betwa and the ken flow from the southwest to the northeast direction the reason is the central highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east now you see the options over here and you know what to do with an assertion reason question assertion reason question is generally the assertion is a statement it's giving you a fact which could be true or false and the reason that they are giving you has to answer the why of the statement right and then you have to see whether both these are true okay so what is the correct answer over here is it both a and r are true and r is correct explanation for a both a, a and r are true and r is the incorrect explanation for a A is true, R is false. A is false and R is true. Put down your answers. And everyone has voted. What is the correct answer over here? Uh, your game A, B, C, D. All you've given me. How can it possibly be correct? Yes. Now the correct answer is that both the assertion and the reason are true, and the reason is the correct explanation for A. If you think about it, these rivers are found in the Central Highlands. What was the reason that we saw? What was the what was the reason that we had written over here that you said that it's basically the Central Highlands are wider in the west and uh, sort of narrower in the east, right? And we said they flow from a southwest to a northeast direction. Now, obviously, when a river is flowing in a particular direction, you know that if it is flowing in a particular way, it indicates some sort of slope. So when we say that the uh, western part of the Central Central Highlands is uh, is more wide, and the eastern part is sort of you know narrower. What does that mean? That means that the ground is not even. That means that there will be a slope over there. And so, if the rivers are flowing from southeast to uh, so southwest to northeast, it is because of this slope. So basically, the assertion and the reason are both correct over here, right? Yes, the Central Highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east. This is the correct. Okay, not to be overconfident, guys. You all got wrong. Okay, reason problem. See, basically, you have to understand if a river is flowing in a particular direction, it will be because of a slope. And the very simple way to think about is wider, narrower, which means there will become a slope. It's uneven over there, right? Okay, 
Fine. With that, let's move on to our next uh, question. What is our next question? Number 26 over here. Number 26 is, uh, let us take a look at, ah, what is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats? Now, this is very easy. This is a fun fact question. Okay. Is it the Anaimuri? Is it the Kanchanjanga? Is it the Mahendra Raj, uh, Ragiri, uh, Mahendragiri or Khasi? What is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats called? Uh, there's not much explanation that is needed for this. Some are saying Anamudi, some are saying Mahindagiri, some are saying, uh, lots are saying Mahindagiri, some are saying D, which is Khasi. Uh, some are saying, most of them are saying C. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, y'all have just got about three seconds more. Let's take a look to see what the correct answer is. And the correct answer is Mahindagiri. I am happy to say that 70 or 4 of you all have got this correct. Absolutely right. There's not, not much explanation that is required for this. This is a purely objective, fact-based, memory-based question. So, we just need to remember it the way it is. Okay, with that, let's move on to question number 27. Question number 27 over here talks about... Ta -da! Consider the following about the Deccan Plateau and identify which among the following statements is true. Think about the Deccan Plateau. The Deccan Plateau has a triangular mass. Number 2 says it lies to the south of the Narmada River. And 3 says Satpura Range lies east of the Deccan Plateau. Come on, put in the correct answers over here. What do you think is true about the Deccan Plateau? Which of the following statements are true? Let us see. Uh, Ma'am, you're my favorite teacher. Thank you. Okay, one and two, one and two. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on. Uh, time is ticking away, ticking away. I see some A's, some B's. Uh, Ma'am, you're the best. Thank you. You are too. All right. B, D, B, D. Ma'am, take my name. Uh, Ahilesha. Your name went away so fast. You have lots of... I did not write my name. Mohammed and Kamla... Kamludin. Okay. Okay. So, the correct answer over here is 1 and 2. That is because the Deccan Plateau is a triangular mass as well as it does fall uh, underneath the... Uh, Narmada River. It's basically south of the Narmada River. Now, can you tell me, Satpura Range is, I, I was just going to ask you, where do you find the Satpura Range? But the answer is already given over here. Satpura Range has its broad base in the north. It is not in the east. Okay, so that could not have been correct. Now, if you take a look at it, you can easily see over here, this is very, very simple. Uh, Deccan Plateau is definitely a triangular mass and it comes under the river Narmada. And with that, we have successfully answered this question. How many of you got it right? Put in the answer. Okay, let's move on to our next question over here. Uh, south of the river Narmada. South of the river Narmada. Okay. Okay, secrets of my positive attitude. You have to work really hard at a positive attitude. Remind yourself every day, look at yourself in the mirror, say, you are a rock star, you're the best. All is well. Say only positive things and positive things will happen. Okay? With that, let's move on to question number 28. Question number 28 coming up on your screen now. Find the incorrect option. Incorrect, na? So take a look at it. Luni is a river found in the Indian desert. Kaveri is a river which forms a delta in the northern Sirkar region. Anai, uh, Anai Muri is the highest peak in the Western Ghats and Bagel Khand is eastward extension of the Central Highlands. Which of these is the wrong statement? Incorrect statement. Sometimes when we are in a hurry, we don't really focus on what the question is saying. You have to read the question carefully now also in the exams also. So we eliminate the chance of all silly mistakes, right? Okay, I see A, D, D, B. I'm seeing all the possible answers over here. Let us see. And the correct answer is the Kaveri River forms a delta in the northern Sirkar region. This is the correct answer over uh, Correct answer in the sense this is the incorrect answer over here because actually the Kaveri River doesn't form a delta in the northern Sirkar region. It goes and drains into the Coromandel region. So this would be the incorrect uh, option which makes it the correct answer. Confusing. The rest of them are all right. With that, let's take a look at question number 29. Question number 29 is going to come onto your screen now. This is the second last question of geography. My friend hails from a country which does not share its land boundary with India. Identify the country. Oh, easy peasy. Is it Bhutan, Bangladesh, Nepal or Tajikistan? Which uh, country does my friend belong to which does not share its land boundary with India? Oh, oh so easy. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I see a lot of the correct answers over here. Huh? Uh, some of you all are saying option E. Where is the option E over here, Baba? Okay, come on, come on, come on. Put in your answer and you have five, four, three, two, one, and... Ta 
The correct answer is Tajikistan, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Nepal are actually all neighboring countries of India. They share a border with India. So this was very easy peasy. I don't need to explain this at all. With that, let's take a look at the last question of geography. Question number 30 appearing on your screen now. The easternmost longitude of India is... Is it 97 degrees 25, uh, 25 minutes east, 68 degrees 7 minutes east, 77 degrees 6 minutes east, or 82 degrees 32 minutes east? Which over here is the easternmost longitude of India? I see a lot of A's, 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 A's. This is a fact based question. This is not something like I said that requires explanation. So if you got it wrong, if you do get it wrong, don't worry. You just need to remember it and get it right next time. But there's not much explanation that is required to this. Let's see if you all have got the correct answer and the correct answer is option a 97 degrees 25 minutes east and with that we have finished our geography questions it is now time for our leaderboard i love the leaderboard i enjoy it so much okay i really feel like a magician when i do this always so the fastest over here is tanish minio congratulations uvix 10th grader here, Avni, Isha, Nivriti, Mannath, Namaste ma'am, Rap God, um, Hema, Varshini and Dharika, congratulations to all of you, y'all are super, 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 uh, if your name is on, the, on this list, very good, y'all are amazing, but if your name is not on this list, also you are very good and amazing because the most important question, the most important thing to remember over here is that you have participated, you have, even if you got an answer wrong, it does not matter because this is an opportunity to learn right okay with that let's move on to our next question economics right okay economics come on come on come on uh, are you ready are you ready give me a lot of hearts then I'm going to go move on to our economic session and then we'll finish 10 questions and uh, I'll let you go please take my name Sandeep hi Sandeep Hearts, 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 lots of hearts, lots of emojis, ah, happy, happy, thank you, okay, great, I see lots of hearts, I love it, thank you, I love you all, okay, with that, let's move on to our first question for economics, question number 31 out of 40, uh, Dr. Sandeep, I just took your name, let's take a look at the question over here, what does the question say? The main economic activity in the village of Palampur is, okay, so this is from that chapter. Is it fishing? Is it agriculture? Is it horticulture? Is it manufacturing? Now, all of you are familiar with the village of Palampur. This is a chapter that we have in our economics uh, textbook, in our, in our syllabus. What is the uh, main economic activity in the village, village of Palampur? I see B, 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 agriculture. So sweet. Let's make ma'am happy. Thank you so much. Okay. And the correct answer is coming up on your screen now. Ta-da! You are absolutely right. The correct answer is a uh, very easy question. Correct. The answer is definitely agriculture. Palampur is basically an agricultural village. This was very easy, but we're just starting. So get ready. With that, let's move on to question number two of economics. That is question number 32. Question number 32 appearing on your screen now. Which among the following is an example of fixed capital? Fixed capital. Is it money? Is it raw materials? Is it machines? Or is it all of the above? Which among is the following and is, is an example of fixed capital? Come on. Think about it. What are the different types of capital there are? A lot of y'all are saying C, C, C. Uh, very question, ma'am. Easy question or tough question? Okay, come on, come on, come on. I see machines, machines. Some of you are saying A, some of you are saying D, which means that there still seems to be some confusion in this area. So most of you are saying C. Okay, so most of you did get it right. 76 of y'all said machines. Congratulations, this is the correct answer. Let us understand what fixed capital is. First of all, physical capital. What is physical capital? Answer the question over here. Physical uh, capital, I'm going to tell you, but you also put it down. Physical capital is what? Physical capital is basically the capital or the inputs that are required at various stages of production, right? It's a variety of inputs, absolutely right, Manish, right? Okay, 
fixed capital is a one time investment means you generally invest in it and then you don't need to keep investing again and again right so for example machines once you bought a tractor once you bought a machine whatever it is the sewing machine or or you know or the harvesting machine you don't need to keep buying it again and again you can basically use that for your next cycle of agriculture also so this is a fixed capital now what is uh, what is the example what is money money for example or raw materials would be an example of what sort of capital who can tell me come on come on come on thank you shavanshu lovely to see you too uh, money and raw materials would be what money and raw materials would be a part of your working capital right so the question over here said which among the following is an example of fixed capital so we know that uh, machine yes that's the answer correct uh, mi uh, mixed i'm saying because fixed mixed machines oof confusion Okay, machines are an example of fixed capital, right? Which is a one-time investment. Okay, I'm fantastic. I see some questions over here. With that, let's move on to question number three. Question number three for economics appearing on your screen now. Ta da! Okay, I'm so excited to be with all of you all today after such a long time. Okay. When more than one crop is grown on a piece of the same uh, on the same piece of land in a year, what is it called? Is it called crop rotation? Is it called kharif crop? Is it called rabi crop? So is it called multiple cropping? Quickly, quickly put in your answers. When more than one crop is grown in a piece uh, of land in the same piece of land in the year, what is it called? Which means you have more than one crop happening at the same time. Okay, I see some answers over here. A, D, A, D, A, D. There seems to be confusion between A and D. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I will give you the answer in just a moment. Most of you know that it is not second and the third options. Correct. Okay, second and third options were out of the, the out of the options only because if you see kharif uh, crops and rabi crops are seasonal crops, right? So these would not be applicable. The confusion over here would be between the crop rotation and the multiple cropping now crop rotation let me explain who can I, okay uh, you i'm going to explain but you can also answer what is crop rotation crop rotation is when crops are sown on the same piece of land one after the other right not together now generally crop rotation is done to best use the nutritional benefits of one plant and then those minerals basically get mixed up in the soil and then the other plant benefits and it's sort of like a beneficial cycle but in crop rotations they're basically doing uh, they're sowing the crops one after the other multiple cropping on the other hand is correct uh, growing crops simultaneously absolutely right multiple cropping is when you have more than one crop at the same time right and this is actually very good land use at the places that you can do now in a in a city now in a village like palampur no land is left idle at all they want to you know try and make use of the land to the best possible benefit so in the kharif season for example they sow jawad and bajra together together on the same piece of land and this is what is called multiple cropping right okay okay yeah crop rotate matlab crop ko 90 degrees par rotate karke lagana leave under root bahar and nahi 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 that's not the answer at all if you put that answer in your exam then really i don't know what sort of marks you're going to get for that crop rotation is basically one after the other right okay with that let's take a look at our next question question number 34 out of 40 which is our fourth question in economics let's take a look at our question now what does it say over here uh Find the incorrect statement. A. Palampur is a village that has well-defined roads. B. Many houses in Palampur have electric connections. C. Palampur has a government primary health center and a dispensary. And D. In Palampur, the villagers are dependent on fishing for their livelihood. Which one over here is uh, the incorrect or the wrong statement? I see a lot of people saying D, 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 D. Okay, let's see. Uh, it's guys uh, chat misleading over the winter with the ch chat is moving too fast okay what over here is the correct answer put in the answer think about it right come on come on come on put in the answer uh, i'm doing absolutely fantastic Okay, and we have two, one, zero, and time is up. And the correct answer over here is that the incorrect statement is what is the incorrect statement? Incorrect statement is that the main, the main, uh, the main work of Palampur, the main uh, profession over here would be fishing. This is not correct because the fact is we know that Palampur is a is an agricultural village. So the main work over here, the main job of the people over here is definitely farming. 
with that we move on to our next question question number 35 out of 40 let's take a look at the question on our screen here answer the following the, this is assertion reason though there are a variety of non-farm activities in palampur only a few people are involved in it this is the statement the reason is that loan facilities and markets do uh, to sell non-farm pro products are not developed well in palampur okay so i'm uh, waiting for your answer assertion reason means the reason has to answer the statement over here what is the assertion what is the reason i'm opening the question on my phone also so that we can discuss it later okay come on come on come on put in your answers okay right what is the question though there are a variety of non-farm activities in palampur only a few people are involved in it why the loan facilities and markets to sell non-farm farm Farm products are not well developed in Pal Palampur. Is the assertion true? Is the reason false? Ah, correct. Uh, the qu correct answer over here is that both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Now, what was the question? Though there are a variety of non-farm activities in Palampur, only a few people are involved in it. That's true. There are other professions, there are other uh, economic activities that are non-farm activities. But is the majority of the population involved in it? No. Minority of the people are involved in it. Why? Because the the, lo the loan developed i mean the, the loan facilities the uh, the markets that are required to sell these non farm products are obviously not very developed uh, loan loan facilities are probably belonging to the informal sector so it becomes very difficult for the farmers to take loans to set up other businesses so, so as a result most people stick to agriculture and they don't really uh, take part in the other non farm activities and that is the correct answer over here right okay with that let's move on Let's take a look at question number six. Question number six out of, of economics, that's 36 out of 40. Let's take a look at it. What does the question over here say? Choose the correct option. Statement one, physical capital is a variety of inputs required at every stage during production. The statement two says, raw materials and money in hand are called fixed capital. What is the correct option over here? Uh, come on, physical capital is a variety of inputs required at every stage during production. Statement 2, raw materials and money in the hand are called fixed uh, capital. You need to uh, select the correct option. Uh, one statement 1 is correct, statement 2 is correct, statement 1 is correct, in statement 2 is incorrect. Both statements are correct, both statements are incorrect. Put in your answers, I C B B B D D D. Uh, come on. Think about it. We did a question that was related to this just a little bit earlier in the same chapter. Come on. Put in your answers. Okay. And your time ends now. Okay. This is good. This is correct. Statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect. Statement 1 was what? Statement 1 basically said that physical, uh, physical capital is the variety of inputs that are required at every stage during production. This is absolutely right. Okay, that is what physical capital is. But we just discussed some time back that physical, that fixed capital is a one-time investment. When we're talking about raw materials and money in hand, that cannot be fixed capital because you're going to keep needing raw materials and money, right? So raw materials and money would be what? Not uh, fixed capital. What would it be? Put in your answer. We've just discussed this. Come on. Twizy Sethi, hi. Put in the answer. What would raw materials and money be? Uh, it would be, yes, working capital, Sahi Jama. that's the correct answer. With that, let's move on to question number 37. Question number 37 appearing on your screen now. Take a look at the question carefully. Now, question says, large population can be turned into a productive asset by, is it by increasing the employment level, is it by stopping migration, is it by investing in human capital, or is it by improving medical facilities? Now, this is, uh, these are questions from a chapter called People as a Resource. Uh, we haven't yet done uh, People as a Resource on the channel, but it will be coming up very, very soon. But in the meantime, this is good practice for you. Large population can be turned into a productive asset by, is it by increasing the employment level, by stopping migration, by investing in human capital or improving medical facilities? The correct answer over here is absolutely right. Option C, which is investing in human capital. Now, think about it. Most people think of a large population as a disadvantage. Oh my God, so many people. How will there be development? But if we invest in human uh, capital, which means we treat people as resources, we make the best use of their potential, we educate them, we train them, those people can actually be used as a resource to 
that will go towards development of the country right so when we invest in human capital automatically we could increase the employment opportunities we could improve the medical facilities right so a large population can be turned into a productive asset by investing in human capital right okay let's go you watched my baiju's premium app of this chapter yes that's a it's a beautiful chapter actually and the baiju's app is a great place to you know understand all these concepts okay with that let's move ahead and let's take a look at question number 30 question number 38 not 30 38 appearing on your screen now and wait for it good evening good evening which among the following is a non economic activity non economic activity yeah is it a teacher teaching in school is it a farmer working on his own farm is it a restaurant owner cooking for customers or is it a tailor stitching his own clothes which of these is a non economic activity give me your answers a lot of you are saying 2 2 2 d d d d d d uh, what is that z z what sort of answer is that okay come on come on come on b b b c c c c c put in your answer and your time is now the correct answer over here is actually option d the rest are all economic activities a teacher teaching in school is working for that is the teacher's employment so that is an economic activity right farmer working on his own farm even though it is own farm it is he is he's selling the crops for a particular economic purpose so it is an economic activity restaurant owner cooking for customers is also for money it is an economic activity but a tailor stitching his own clothes is not an economic activity it's a personal reason right so the answer is d all right with that let's move ahead and let's move on to our second last questions of economics and the second last question of this entire quiz second last question appearing on your screen now take a look at the question over here choose the correct option among the following statement 1 in case of rural areas there is seasonal and disguised unemployment and statement 2 says urban areas have mostly uh, educated employment what do you think is the correct answer over here is statement 1 uh, incorrect and statement 2 correct statement 1 correct in, uh, statement 2 incorrect both statements are correct or both statements are incorrect give us the answer over here in case of rural areas there is seasonal and disguised unemployment statement number 2 says urban areas have mostly educated unemployment a lot of you all are saying c c c c c c all right we have 10 seconds more to get the correct answer some of you are saying d also okay let's take a look uh, we shall see what the correct answer is and we will understand it we will analyze it and if you got it wrong we will learn okay so it is a fact that both statements are correct what are the two statements that in the case of rural areas there is seasonal and disguised unemployment absolutely true what is the meaning of seasonal uh, uh, seasonal uh, seasonal unemployment which means that sometimes they are working sometimes they are not working this could de depend on the agricultural season uh, this could depend on the fact that they are daily wage workers so they don't have reg regular work so basically there's no regular employment so there is seasonal unemployment disguised unemployment what is disguised unemployment basically let's say we have seven people working on a farm now those seven people okay uh, even if we were to cut out two people for, from that the productivity of the farm is not affected at all in any way so we say that this there is disguised unemployment so it seems that the people are employed but actually there is disguised unemployment so this statement is absolutely correct apart from that when we say that in the urban areas there is educated unemployment that's true because a lot of the people in in the urban areas are educated but they are unemployed because of various reasons so the fact is that both of these statements are correct okay all right with that let's move on to question number 40 question number 40 which is the last question on our quiz with that let's take a look at the question the question over here says wait for it which is an activity performed by the tertiary sector ah easy peasy ah is it working in farms it is it transporting goods is it manufacturing clothes or is it studying in a college which of these is performed by the tertiary sector come on put in your answer over here some of you all are saying d some of you all are saying c okay tertiary sector tertiary sector uh b b a some of you are saying a okay there's confusion about what the answer is over here we'll clarify it in a moment as soon as the time is up okay so the correct answer some of you all are saying c also 
Okay, the correct answer over here is actually that an activity performed by the tertiary sector is transporting goods. We know that there are three sectors. One is the primary sector, which is basically agricultural. It's the agricultural sector. So all farming activities are part of the primary sector. Then we have the secondary sector, which is the manufacturing industries, right? These are the uh, industries that make things. And the tertiary sector, which is the service industry. Now, the service industry or the tertiary sector basically generally is an aid or helps both the primary as well as the secondary sector. In fact, it's, it comes up more because of the rising demand. Now, if we're taking a look at it, working in farms, working in farms is an agricultural activity. So that's primary sector. Transporting goods. Transporting goods would be necessary both for the agricultural sector as well as for the uh, for the manufacturing sector and it you know it's it's a service that helps both of these industries so this does form it fall into the tertiary sector manufacturing clothes a secondary industry and student in a college studying in a college oh that's that that falls into none of the sectors because it it's basically not um, it's not it's not a sector of economy, right? You're not working. The student is studying, so it doesn't apply. And with that, questions are easy peasy. Ma'am, I'm a fan of you. Ma'am, what time is tomorrow's mentee? Tomorrow, there is a mentee for sixth grade from uh, six to seven. And there is, yeah, Ankita ma'am is sitting right there and she's, I'm, I'm trying to see whether I got the sahi jawab. Maybe I should have a whole multiple choice question over here and she'll be able to answer what is the correct answer over here. And the ninth, the tenth standard mentee is from, Ankita ma'am, am I correct? 729. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Okay, now are you ready for the leaderboard? Shout out me, Yuk Kumar, Sethi, hi! You want me to shout, why? Okay, with that, let's take a look at our leaderboard. Abracadabra. Okay, let's take a look at what our names are over here. Isha, Isha. That is 33428 points. Very good. Uh, I'm very proud of you, Isha. But we also have Manit, Manish, 10th uh, grader, rare, uh, Tanish, UV, Jasna. Uh, and the names are a little uh, not clear on this list. But basically, you took a look, list, look at the leaderboard a little earlier. Uh, so these are the names on our, ten, on our leaderboard. Congratulations to all of you. And even if your name is not on the list, like I said, this is a good, fun place to learn. It's a low risk place to learn because we're all learning from each other over here. And even if we got something wrong, it doesn't really matter because we won't make the same mistake again next time. Right? Okay. With that, rank badly deteriorated. It doesn't matter. Like I said, the most important thing is this is not the exam. In your exams, you'll do better. And even if the rank to deteriorate it over here no biggie right how long this class is going to take place is there any other mentee today uh, this class is over in fact this is pretty much the end of today's uh, mentee so we have done history geography political science and economics and you know that all of this is available for you on the 9th and 10th channel we've got daily live classes happening for you from five o'clock to nine o'clock all our rockstar teachers over here working so very hard to make sure that you score top most marks in your exams please go ahead revise take the mentee quizzes over here go ahead and watch the videos the concept videos the chapter videos that we've got out for you on the channel and if you do all of this you're definitely very supported you know that we are always here for you and with this this is me tarana ma'am signing off Ankita ma'am you want to come and say bye to them okay she's saying bye from there only all right then bye see you see you soon soon okay all right i love you too rishita she says take my name okay with that, this is Tarana and I'm signing off. Bye-bye.